Good morning. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about ecosystems today. Um, ecosystems are about the interaction between the biotic, so the living aspects of uh, the system, and the abiotic, the, uh, the non-living parts of the system, uh, and the interactions between them. So climate's going to be important in dictating an ecosystem, uh, which is essentially how much rain there is, how much sunshine there is in a place, to dictate whether we're going to end up with a, a desert or rainforest or anything else in between. Um, they can operate on a range of scales so we can talk about global scale ecosystems uh, which as I say might be a desert um, or uh, going right down to a small ecosystem a freshwater pond or an individual hedgerow. Um, just while I get to here there is a uh, departed grass snake I've found in the, in the grass here. Uh, which is nice to see, it uh, uh, suggests there is a lot of biodiversity in this area, um, although it's not ideal that it's no longer with us. But probably there are some grass snakes around that are still with us, one would hope. Um, okay, so the elements of an ecosystem are gonna dictate um, the species that might live there and the makeup of that system. Um, it's worth noting that humans can destroy or damage um, and also enhance an ecosystem uh, depending on how we interact with it. Um, so human management, as I say, can be beneficial. Uh, this land here uh, used to be uh, temperate deciduous forest or uh, the forest that we get uh, in the British Isles, uh, this kind of forest over here, and it's turned, been, been turned over time into uh, agricultural land. There's some horses uh, in this field over here, I think. Uh, can't see them now. There's one in the distance over there. Um, and then this, this section, this side of the fence, has then been converted back from being uh, farming land into um, now a private garden. Um, and there's been efforts that have been made to increase biodiversity here. So wildflower, this is a wildflower meadow. Um, it, given the time of year, it has started to be dominated by a few species, um, but different times of the year, you get different species that are uh, gonna be flourishing here. Um, a really good example, um, of one of the relationships between the different species that we have uh, would be just here. This is this yellow daisy-like set of flowers. This is ragwort. Um, and ragwort uh, produces loads of nectar, um, but it can be a poisonous for uh, cattle and horses. So as a result, uh, has got a bit of a shady reputation. Um, and there are laws actually to suggest that you do have to clear it uh, if a neighbor um, thinks it's invading their land uh, nearby. Um, but it's got this really interesting relationship with the cinnabar moth, uh, which is a really pretty red and black moth, looks a bit like a butterfly. Um, so the cinnabar moth lays its eggs on the ragwort, on the leaves, and the caterpillars hatch out, and there's caterpillars here now, you can see them. These are quite mature caterpillars. They've got perhaps only two or three weeks left uh, until they um, turn into chrysalises and then eventually become the moth and you can see this one here actually and has been making his way up eating away at these leaves um, of the ragwort and as they eat the ragwort they take on the alkaloids in the plant um, and make themselves more and more more and more toxic um, so therefore they actually put off predators quite well so there's not many things that will come by and try and eat one of these caterpillars the cuckoo actually though uh, being one example um, of one of their predators. Uh, okay, so if I move on slightly down here. Um, actually, let's talk about soil. So soil is really important for uh, an ecosystem as well. Um, how do we make soil, I hear you ask? Well, um, soil is all about the, the weathered bedrock from underneath, mixing with the organic matter on the top. And in the UK, because we have these le uh, trees that lose their leaves, there's an oak tree here, lose their leaves in the autumn, the leaves fall to the what would be the forest floor and they, they uh, add to the organic content of that soil when they mix with the, the minerals released by the rocks as they weather. Uh, that also combines with water and some of the gases from the atmosphere to create a variety of soils in different places around the world. In the UK we have deep uh, brown earths which are very fertile uh, and therefore the ecosystem follows on from that. So let's talk about the freshwater pond. There's a really small example of a freshwater pond just here, buried uh, in and amongst those plants. 
but there's loads and loads of stuff going on within the habitats the variety of habitats of the freshwater pond there's producers on the margins of the pond in this case we've got uh, this is a uh, really uh, celebrated example well-known example uh, this is marsh marigold just here has lovely yellow flowers at certain points in the year um, on the surface of the water there's duckweed that does no harm uh, but um, is also photosynthesizing uh, in there um, so that, what do we mean by that well the plants are going to convert the um, the sun's rays uh, into sugars via photosynthesis and then other things come along and eat the producers so these are the consumers aren't they they will um, eat the producers or other consumers will some consumers will eat um, other consumers further up the food chain um, pond snails are going to eat um, the pond plants as an example um, which leads us into the the trophic pyramid so the higher up the food chain you go the fewer um, of any particular species there might be in reality the relationships are complex and food webs flow food web flows are the most useful thing to consider as opposed to perhaps the more simplistic food chains we have scavengers um, and decomposers also that are going to be operating particularly at the bottom of this pond uh, down in the depths let's see if there's a, any frogs in here today sometimes there are no there's no frogs jumped up uh, but there's going to be uh, and swap hands actually decomposers down the bottom of this pond that are going to be perhaps in there pulling apart oh it doesn't smell very nice uh, breaking down all that material um, and re returning it recycling it back into the soil um, that, and then the nutrients being absorbed by uh, the plants again um, I've just knocked off the little the way in which the frogs get out of the pond, I have to put that back afterwards. Um, the rat-tailed maggot is a really good example of a scavenger at the bottom of a pond. So, uh, ecosystems are often vulnerable to change. Uh, there is going to be uh, loss of species if people mess around with ecosystems in a negative way. Although there are ways in which, if we think about it, we can manage ecosystems more productively. Thank you very much.